All right, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be doing a kitchen tabletop review of a uh, GMRS radio from uh, Midland. And this is a uh, 15 watt uh, GMRS radio. It's uh, model number MXT275. And it's a brand new offering from Midland um, and a very interesting one at that. Uh, this was released, I believe, around mid July of 2018. Uh, and I'm doing this review uh, at the end of July of, of 2018, so uh, this is a pretty new radio on the market and there's not a lot of them out there right now. So I thought I'd do a quick unboxing, uh, talk about some of the features of the radio. Uh, we'll do kind of an in-depth uh, look at the hardware itself and uh, we'll give it a shot, try it out, see how it performs. and. Uh, uh, may, we may end up doing a part two on this with some field testing, but I uh, wanted to give you mainly an overview of the radio, what's included with it, and uh, some of its uh, interesting features. So let's go ahead and get started and uh, see what's in this thing. Well, let me stop for just a second and talk about the key reasons that I purchased this radio. Just real quickly, uh, there were a few main features about this radio that I really liked. The first one was the integrated mic, and I just really think this radio has a great mic design. The way that all the controls are basically built into the hand mic, you don't need to mount the base unit anywhere that you can see it for like the channel number or a dial, you know, to change the channel or anything like that. The base unit is tiny. It can be hidden away just about anywhere. And I really like that it has a very nice compact base unit. Uh, the power on this unit is uh, more than adequate for, you know, 99% of what you're going to do. So 15 watts of power is great. I'd love to have more, but, you know, 15 watts is good. I also have a GMRS license. So, um, you know, I do use GMRS. So uh, this is a nice little radio for, you know, somebody that uses those frequencies. All right. Well, I'm not going to show uh, pulling all the pieces out of the box. I've already gotten this thing out and uh, I've started taking a look at it. But uh, let me walk through what's included in the package. Uh, the first thing you get, um, and this is really the the main attraction of this device right here is the uh, handheld piece. It's got a little screen with the channel, all your controls, volume, power, everything is uh, included on this uh, handset here. And this is uh, one of the key features of this radio that I'll talk about a little bit more in detail. On the back side here, uh, you've got a RJ45 connector that plugs into the radio. This uh, cable is heavy duty. This thing is uh, really um, thick uh, wire coating, heavy insulation. This thing uh, is built to last. I mean, this is a high quality uh, handheld here uh, with the very high quality um, uh, cabling going on here. The unit itself is actually pretty beefy. I mean, it's got some weight to it. A nice click. Just feels like a really well-made unit. Um, and this is the piece that you're going to be using the most out of the whole whole device. So this is uh, what the handset plugs into. So it plugs into the uh, jack right here. You'll notice a USB port. And you'll notice how small this is. This thing is tiny. Uh, there's not a lot to it. Uh, on the back, you've got uh, the power cable. Uh, you've got the antenna connector, a PL, I believe that's a PL239. Standard... Um, uh, 50 ohm antenna connection and you've also got an external speaker out if you can see that right there so if you want to hook up an external speaker you can do it right there so uh, really light really small it's got a speaker on the bottom um, so depending on where you mount this you might want to keep that in mind if you put this uh, hidden away somewhere you might muffle up that speaker a little bit, so that's where your external speaker would come in handy. Um, really nice little discrete unit. You can mount this just about anywhere because it is uh, uh, so small. Uh, from what I understand on this USB slot, this is um, an additional USB power out slot only. So depending on where you mounted it, you could use it to uh, power up a smartphone or something. I originally thought that might be used for some programming, uh, but from everything that I've looked at so far, it, it's not for programming. It's actually for um, uh, just providing an additional power outlet. So, uh, all right, so that's the head end unit. All right, let's take a look at some of the other accessories in the box here. 
We get an owner's manual. Very small. It's got a lot of good information in it though. It looks to be well laid out. You can actually pull this up online in PDF format on the uh, Midland website if you want to go take a look at it beforehand before making a purchase. Okay, here comes the uh, power cable. So this is just a standard uh, cigarette lighter type adapter, 12 volt. Uh, it does have an inline fuse right there. And I believe in one of these bags, accessory bags, comes with a spare fuse. So you get a spare fuse with it. Um, and if you do want to do a hard wire mount into the, into the vehicle, so you don't have to chew up a cigarette lighter slot, you can just clip that off right there and then just wire it in directly. Keep the fuse if you can um, in line. Uh, it'll just protect the radio from any, any uh, surges or anything. And uh, the connector, I don't know what standard connector that is. I haven't seen it before, but um, it's a square in a circle and it's just a standard 12 volt, nothing special about that. So that's your power cable. I'll set that up here. Actually, I'll set that back here. This is a um, uh, DC switching power supply right here. So we'll go ahead and actually plug this in here. And we'll fire up the radio here in just a minute. <coughs> Okay, so here is the antenna that's included with the radio. It's got a uh, PL, I believe that's called a 259 or 239 uh, connector. It's a standard 50 ohm uh, connector. That's the antenna. It's actually pretty short. I'd say this is, uh, well, let's measure it real quick. That's a six inch, six inch antenna. Um, so real discreet, small magnetic base right there. It's got plenty of cable. I'd say that's probably a good 15 feet. And uh, let's take a look at the cable itself. Okay, so this is RG174 coax. So this is the thin 50 ohm cable. Uh, perfectly adequate for, for this type of radio. Um, and it also makes it if, very easy to um, snake around a, a door seal or something if you want to uh, mount it temporarily on the outside of your vehicle and you can just snake this thing through a door uh, without uh, interfering with the seals too much. Okay, so that's the uh, antenna. Let's see what else we got here. Okay, that's the uh, holder for the microphone. It does exactly what you'd expect. And we've got in this little baggie pieces of velcro so that's probably just for some different mounting options Looks like we've got four pieces of velcro so I'd imagine uh, you could probably use that velcro on this unit if you wanted to just velcro it in place also in this little baggie with the spare fuse there's three screws just real short look like they're maybe a little over three-eighths of an inch or something um, and I believe that is for the bracket, the support bracket. So this unit has, here's the holes for the bracket right here. So uh, depending on where you're mounting it, you can uh, just use those screws or use your own. So this particular bracket fits in like that. It does have some clips where you can remove it pretty easily. It would just slide out and slide back in. So if you did want to remove it from your vehicle, uh, it would be pretty easy to take out. So, nice little unit. I like that uh, mounting bracket too, that's, that's pretty handy. So, alright, let's go ahead and uh, play with the radio here and get it fired up and uh, take a look at its uh, power on modes and uh, we'll see what, see what this thing looks like. Okay, we're going to go ahead and just quickly attach this antenna. You don't want to uh, do any transmitting without an antenna attached because it could possibly damage the radio but uh, most of the modern uh, you know radios built in the last five years or so probably longer than that um, actually have some circuitry that protects against that but uh, I know a lot of the old radios if you key them up without an antenna on it can really do some damage so um, just a good practice to make sure you've got the antenna in and that just clicks in RJ45. So that's uh, it's a nice little connector too. It's got a little boot over it to keep out dust. Uh, I 
don't think it's going to be waterproof, but it probably would protect it pretty well from splashes. Um, but being submerged, uh, no, I don't think that would work. All right, so let's put some power on here. So our voltage is reading 13.8. Good to go. So let's, okay. we're going to go ahead and just quickly attach this antenna. You don't want to uh, do any transmitting without an antenna attached because it can possibly damage the radio. But uh, most of the modern uh, and uh, your volume adjustment is going to be right here. Okay. So I'm using this for, uh, I've used it once or twice before, but I'm still getting used to it. So let's look at the uh, weather functionality real quick. So you hit the weather button. Indicator, 86 at Montgomery and 89 at Columbus, Mississippi. That's about as low as I can get it right now there. Now here is the hazardous weather outlook for the county served by the National Weather Service Office Looks in like Birmingham. It's pretty loud there. For outlook through tonight. All right. Uh, if you want to monitor the channel. That basically takes the squelch off and lets you hear if anybody's talking on the channel. So a good use of that particular function would be if you were using a uh, squelch code, uh, which we'll talk about in a little bit, which are commonly referred to as privacy codes, although there's it has nothing to do with privacy. Uh, there's a whole series of codes you can program in here that um, will basically only undo the squelch when the other radio has the same code. So if you have lots of people on the same frequency, say channel 22, they can all share the frequency, but if they don't want to hear each other's transmissions, they, they just need to put in different privacy codes into each of their radios. And so that way you only hear the person that you're transmitting with and not all the other people. But anybody listening on channel 22 without a privacy code can listen into all the conversations going on. So if you want to listen to a particular channel's transmissions, you just hit the monitor button and that will let you listen to everything regardless of the uh, privacy codes. It's actually a good way of checking to see if a channel is busy if you've got um, privacy codes, otherwise you can uh, talk on top of each other. Scan function, it's obviously a good way to see if you can pick up some uh, local transmissions. I'll just sit there and scan through the channels. It's not a super fast scan, but it's uh, certainly adequate for what it is. All right, so this button down on the bottom left is the lock button. So if you go ahead and hit that for a few seconds, it will actually lock the interface here. So when you hit buttons, it won't uh, uh, get off frequency or turn the volume down or anything like that, um, which is handy if you've got a novice user and they don't know what all the buttons do and they might accidentally hit something while they're you know, out in the, on an ATV or something. Um, that way you can be sure that the, uh, uh, the unit stays locked in. Now to undo it, obviously you don't need a code or anything. You just have to hit that lock button for a few seconds and it'll unlock itself. But, but um, that's, that's a very handy feature right there. So here's the call button if you want to make a call or send a call signal to another radio. That will send out the uh, call tone. So menu, DB, hit the lock button, and now I can use and adjust the background so you can see the different background colors. Scrolling through that menu item, and then you hit the uh, lock button to confirm your selection. A little bit of uh, getting used to on the controls there. Um, not anything difficult. You just got to kind of figure out. You got to read the manual basically to figure out which buttons are going to be the ones that do the confirmations and things. Um, so yeah, so this is uh, actually set to channel 18 right now. I'm going to do it. All right, turn it off. Let's go, buddy. Let's go. Turn it off. All right, we just got a transmission from somebody around here. Well, if I had to guess, that's probably a landscaper somewhere uh, a mile or two around here uh, working on somebody's yard and they're uh, communicating with each other, trying to coordinate uh, shutting off the water or something. Well, let's uh, do a little bit of radio testing here. Test transmission on channel 20. Test transmission on channel 20. Okay, well, let's go ahead and get this test started. I'm actually still in the house, just walking out to my car, I'm talking on the handheld. And uh, we're going to test out channel 20 here, see how it sounds. GMRS channel 20, test transmission. I am actually in my vehicle, and we're about to get this test started. We're going to go out about two miles and see what kind of uh, reception we get. And I'm also going to be transmitting from my ICOM 5100.
Rush Channel 20, ICOM 5100 test, and we're at low power, about a tenth of a mile, moving on to about two tenths of a mile from the uh, Midland radio. GMRS test on channel 20, this is from the ICOM 5100. We are currently on low power, I'm going to switch up to medium power. We're about a third of a mile from the Midland uh, hilly terrain. Alright, this is a medium power transmission from the uh, 5100, testing on GMRS channel number 20. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Testing, testing, one, two, three. This is a test transmission on channel 20, medium power, ICOM 5100, Midland, and we are about uh, almost about a half a mile. Transmitting, I'm going to switch over to high power. GMRS test on channel 20, ICOM 5100 to Midland. This is about a half a mile transmission. A little bit of a hill here, so might have some decent perception. And uh, I'm going to head out to be about a mile, 1.2 miles here, and I'm going to test the handheld next. GMRS channel 20, this is from the handheld battle pump, and we're testing at uh, about uh, three quarters of a mile here, uh, transmitting at about uh, eight watts on channel 20. The actual is Maybe even five, but uh, seven times. Test transmission on GMRS channel 20, 5100. I'm at about uh, one mile out here, and uh, about to hit, hit 1.2 miles. I'm currently at a red light, and uh, testing transmission 123. Testing, testing 123. We're at 50 watts on the 5100 volt. Testing channel 20, GMRS. That was a long red light. I'm at about 1.1 miles. This is 5100 high power alpha. Uh, channel 20. And yes, people can't drive around here. I'll be coming back here in just a second with the uh, handheld. We're at about uh, 1.2 miles. GMRS channel 20. We are testing, testing 123. Testing, testing 123. This is uh, 5100, but high power 50 watts. Testing. Testing. 20. As you can tell, the uh, audio signal is getting very weak right here, so we're right at the limits of uh, what I can do in the environment that I'm, uh, I'm trying to transmit in. Well, the ICOM 5100 can make it through here with uh, high power, but uh, we're right at the limits of uh, what we can do in this environment. Testing ICOM 5100, high power, approximately, I'd say about half a mile from uh, the receiver. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Testing, testing, one, two, three. GMRS channel 20, testing, uh, low power 5100. Uh, we're about two tenths of a mile out, and we'll be uh, back uh, towards the receiver here in just a moment. All right, well, that concludes the test. I'm just pulling into the driveway, and uh, Hopefully that gives you a good idea of what that Midland radio is uh, capable of receiving. Let's go ahead and uh, set up another test here and see what this thing can do on the transmit side. A few quick notes on that uh, receive test. Uh, the speaker sounded good. I thought the uh, uh, receiver was pretty selective and uh, did, did a nice job of pulling that signal in. Uh, in this test, obviously it was not scientific, but uh, I did not have the antenna placed up high. I uh, literally had it uh, mounted uh, probably a foot or two away from the actual base unit. So uh, it was just sitting on my uh, kitchen table here. So definitely not an optimal antenna placement with some um, additional work on the antenna. Um, probably pull in some uh, signals from uh, a little bit further away, even in this uh, really rough transmission environment that I've got. All right, well, let's get the Midland radio test underway. All right, the GMRS channel 20 test is underway. We are about...
about one tenth of a mile out, and uh, we are transmitting on the Midland radio. And uh, looks like we've got a good signal going out at the moment. Getting picked up by the big cone antenna and the scanner, and uh, getting this uh, current location. So we're about to head out of the neighborhood in just a minute or two. MRS channel 20, 22 miles out on the Midland Radio, 15 watts high power. Midland high power, 4 miles, that's a Midland high power, that's a half a mile, that's a 15 watts. Looks like we're going to get a bit of a rainstorm here, I'm at about 0.6 miles, and uh, about 35 miles an hour. Uh, hopefully getting a good transmission here. I have no line of sight at all. Got several hills and lots of trees at this point. Okay, this is a 1.2 mile transmission at 50 watts on the uh, channel 20 GMRS. Testing, testing, 1, 2, 3. This is the ICOM 5100. impressions of that test uh, obviously it wasn't a scientific test and uh, my my location is going to be very different from yours I'm sure but I've got tons of hills tons of trees it's a very difficult uh, environment to transmit in uh, I thought the radio did great uh, my only complaint is it seems like the mic gain is really low uh, so it's coming in with a pretty soft um, uh, transmission. Uh, you can increase the volume a little bit on your receiver, but uh, certainly if there was some mic gain um, to be added there, I think that would help out a lot. Uh, I think overall uh, the radio did great on the transmit test. Let's take a look at the inside of this radio. We're going to go ahead and take the cover off, just take a quick peek inside to see what's uh, going on in the innards of this thing, and uh, see if we can uh, learn anything additional about the radio. It uh, 
It's a very compact design, but uh, uh, you know, you never know what you might find under the case. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, pull the case off so you don't have to on yours. All right, let's go ahead and pop that off. Oops, looks like we got another one on the side there. Looks like all these screws are the same size. got to get under there. Okay, so there's the speaker. Looks like it's got a little uh, plug-in adapter there. I'm going to try not to unplug that right this second. Let's go ahead and get a look at the inside here. Nice heat sink. You've got a little uh, heat sink uh, adhesive. There's the antenna connection. Looks good. Power connection looks pretty solid. Not a lot on this board. It's a pretty simple radio, um, and it's only transmitting on, what, about uh, 15 frequencies, something like that. So frequencies are pre-programmed. There might be some opportunities to do some modifications in here. Um, not really sure. Uh, have to take a good look at it, but uh, I'm not going to go ahead and remove that board. I'm going to leave that as is. I just wanted to give you mainly a view of the inside of this thing so you can see uh, its internal circuitry and components. Let's see if I can get a good view there. And here's a shot from that angle. All right. And it looks like on the USB. That USB actually looks a little more complex than I thought it would be because um, it's really just a 12 to 5 volt adapter, but there's something going on there. Might have to do a little more research on that. I'm wondering if uh, that's actually used for programming at the factory. Okay, well now we've looked at this radio in some detail. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put it back together here. A few things I don't like about the radio. Uh, number one, the mic gain, gain, as I've mentioned before, sounds a little bit low to me. Uh, I wish there was a way to adjust that. And the other thing that's kind of interesting is I haven't been able to find any specs on the actual uh, power ratings for this radio other than what's advertised on the outside of the box. Uh, there's no references to it in the manual, so I thought that was kind of curious. Anyway, not a big deal. Maybe they can improve the uh, documentation. Well, this uh, radio has got a lot of great features. It's even got a few that I have didn't even include in this video. Like there's a little cover for the USB uh, slot on the base radio to keep dust and water out of that. And there's also on the handset uh, an external mic and speaker input. So those are great features as well. But uh, if I had to pick a few items uh, that I wish this thing had on it, uh, here's just a quick review of those. Um, I do wish it had a few programmable channels. Uh, I like to program in all my radios, uh, things like uh, Camp Channel 1, Camp Channel 2, and I basically set up a squelch code and a frequency um, to quickly change between um, uh, different channels. And, you know, I'll define like five or ten of those for different activities, and uh, uh, I think that works really well. I wish this radio could uh, uh, store maybe ten channels, uh, which are just combinations of the frequency and the uh, squelch code. I think that'd be kind of neat. Uh, the mic gain adjustment I've talked about, you know, that mic sounds a little uh, soft to me. Uh, more power? Well, maybe there's a new model coming that uh, upgrades the power a little bit. Uh, that'd be kind of neat. I've always been curious about uh, the connectors. You know, we always use these old style PL259, SO239 connectors. And those were really designed for um, the old uh, VHF uh, radios and uh, they work on UHF which is uh, where GMRS plays but um, uh, you know the new more modern uh, connectors like the N connector or an SMA type connector especially SMA you know being this thing is such a small form factor uh, would be kind of interesting on this radio and uh, you know that's uh, a MERS channel uh, some VHF MERS uh, would be interesting I think the people that use this radio are uh, probably interested in those particular channels as well and uh, I think that's about it I mean this radio's got some great features but uh, those are a few items that uh, if I had to pick a perfect radio it would include all of those features all right guys well thanks for watching the video I hope you
and uh, useful information for you. This is definitely a nice radio, and uh, check it out if you're in the market for a CMRS type radio. Uh, make sure you get licensed. And uh, if you like the video, hit thumbs up and subscribe. Don't forget that little bell if you want to get notified about any new videos. And uh, thanks for tuning in. We'll see you on the next one, guys.